VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, XLOOKUP. What is the difference between all these three functions here in Excel? And are they interchangeable? So with this practical example, we're going to see how can we use all these three different functions here in Excel. Let's start here with the difference between the VLOOKUP function and the HLOOKUP function, for example. So the HLOOKUP function, the H, stands for the horizontal lookup. And the VLOOKUP, the V, stands for vertical lookup. So this is the difference. Basically, the HLOOKUP and the VLOOKUP functions is pretty similar. However, the difference is one is vertical, another one have a lookup in a horizontal way. So this is basically the difference. And the XLOOKUP can do both, can do the vertical lookup and the horizontal lookup. Or whenever you got an arrow using the VLOOKUP or the HLOOKUP, for example, you can use the XLOOKUP to help you out solving the problem. So let's start here using the HLOOKUP function. We're going to see, we're going to have here two different spreadsheets. The first one, I have my monthly sales report, but I have two data sets. I have this data set right here, this blue one, and this orange one here above. In this orange one, I have my data sets just in a horizontal way, okay? So it's organized in a horizontal way. But this data set that right I have here in the blue color, it's organized in a vertical way. So we can use the HLOOKUP for this first data set here and the VLOOKUP for the second data set here, okay? Let's start using the HLOOKUP function in a practical way. So here in my analysis, I want to just type it in here, a fruit name, like for example, uh, grapes, okay? So I type it in grapes, or I just click and select, but I can type it in two, so I can type it in grapes, enter, and then I want to automatically have here the quantity, the total, and the ID that corresponds with this item here. So I want to match all these informations. To do it, I can use the HLOOKUP function, the VLOOKUP function, or even the XLOOKUP function. But because I'm going to use here my first data set, look, my reference is this row right here. Okay, so I'm going to look up for the fruit, for example, grapes. Okay, but due to the fact that my reference is, is a row, I need to use HLOOKUP horizontal. Okay, because my reference is in a horizontal way, I need to use the HLOOKUP function. And Whenever the HLOOKUP function look up for me here in this column, for example, and it's find what I need to, to find, like grapes, it's going to stick with all the values in the column of the grapes, okay? And then it's going to return for me any value that I need to return. So I can just specify a value here and bring it back as the result. So let's make it in a practical way. So here I just type in the fruit name. And then I want to automatically return the quantity. So equal sign H lookup here. I have my function, double click it to select one, two, okay. So my lookup value is gonna be grapes. I can select the cell here instead of in between quotations, type it in the text, because that way just selecting the cell, I can make my H lookup function dynamic. Whenever I just change this value right here, my H lookup function is gonna automatically update for me. So I just select here the cell above, comma. What is my table array? My table array needs to start with the column that I'm going to use as the reference. So I can't start and select here the first row of my data set. I can't do it, okay? I cannot do it. I need to start with my column of the reference. So I'm going to select all the values that I have in my column that I'm going to use as reference and the rows below. So I select everyone here, these range right here, okay? Now I'm going to use here my formula bar. I'm going to press comma. Now I need to type it in my row index number. What is this? So for example, as I just select all this range right here as my criteria range, as my lookup range, I need to check what is the number of row that I want to use to bring back the result. So for example, if I just select here this range, my first row is going to be my row number one. And my second one is going to be number two, my third one, number three, my fourth one, number four, and so on. So the number of the row depends on the range that we just select. Okay, so if you just made a range, the first row of this range is going to be row number one. And the following rows is going to increase one unit. Okay, one, two, three, and so on. So because I want to use the result, the corresponding values of the column that I have the quantity, I need to type it in here, the number two, and then comma again. And then I'm going to just double click here in the exactly match, double click it, close parentheses, and then enter. Now I already have here automatically function working for me. 
So whenever I just change here the fruit, it's going to bring back the value of the quantity. So for example, cherries is equal to 3,800, for example. So let me check here if it's correct. Uh, cherries is here. Yeah, okay, it's correct. So let's try to make it to the total, for example, for the total a month. I can use equal sign H lookup, double click it. The value that I'm looking for is the cherries, comma, and then my table ray is going to be all the range that I'm going to use. But I need to start with the first row that I'm going to use as criteria. So I cannot start with this first row right here and neither with the total ID. I need to start with the fruits. Okay, so I select everyone here. Okay, comma. And now here I can see in my formula bar. Now I just need to insert here my row index number. But here I have a problem because my range that I just selected before is this range right here. It's a start in the row number four. Okay, so in this row right here. But I want to bring it back as result my row that is my total row. So this row right here that is just above my row uh, that I'm using as reference. Because of that, I cannot use the HLOOKUP here in this situation. So whenever you have your reference just after or in HLOOKUP, your reference column, your start point of your range is just below your result that you want to bring back, you cannot use the HLOOKUP function. So this is why we need to use the XLOOKUP here in this situation, because there is no way I can bring back a row that is just above my reference row. Or of course, you can also use the index match function, but let's stick with the XLOOKUP, okay? So I'm gonna press here the escape button, and then let's just build it in this function using the equal sign XLOOKUP function. Double click it, and in my opinion, in my perspective, to use a XLOOKUP function is easier to use the HLOOKUP or to use the VLOOKUP function because it requires less criteria, okay? So the lookup value is my fruit name, cherries, comma. My lookup array is here in my monthly sales report. And now I, instead of, I can do many different ways. So for example, I can select either just the range itself, okay? Or I can select the entire row, row number four, okay? I'm gonna stick with the second option that is to select the entire row. And then I'm gonna press Comma. And now we can check here in the formula bar that my XLOOKUP functions is asking me my return array or the row that I want to use as return. I can select here the entire row number three because it's where I have here my total. The end the total, the row of total is the result that I'm going to bring back. I'm going to close parentheses here and then enter. And yeah, I'm done. If I can, I can check this result. So cherries is 22,000. Let's check it out here. For example, yeah, cherry 22,000. Yes, it's perfectly correct. And of course, I can change this formatting to uh, accounting formatting. So home tab, and I can just choose here this dollar sign, okay? And yeah, we're done. I can do the same thing here for the ID. And if you guys just pay attention here, I cannot use the HLOOKUP function because my ID row is just above the row that I'm gonna use as reference, as the reference for the lookup, okay? So I cannot use here the HLOOKUP function itself. Let's start here. So equal sign, X lookup, double click it. My lookup value is going to be the fruit here, comma. My lookup array is going to be my fruits, row number four, comma. And my return array is going to be my first row that I have here in the my data set, okay? Row number two, close parentheses, enter. And I done. So whenever I just change here the fruit name, I'm going to get a new result for all the values that I want you looking for. And the good thing is, I'm not looking for anything. The Excel is the one that are, that are looking for me, so I don't need to do the work. Excel is going to do the work for me. In the same way that we just see that the XLOOKUP can cover the gaps in the HLOOKUP function, it can do the same thing when we are using the VLOOKUP function, for example. So here in the second data set, what I have here, the ID, the total, and so on, I want to use as the reference, the column where I have my fruits. And for example, I want to bring it back as result, my quantity column and my total column and my ID column. But in the same way, the HLOOKUP function cannot just bring back as result a row that is just above or a reference. Here in the VLOOKUP function, it's going to work in the same way. So if I just select here the fruit as my reference column, it only can bring back as result any columns that you have just to the right of your column, of your reference. But if you need, for example, to bring back the total column or the ID column as the result, 
it's not going to be possible to use the VLOOKUP function to make it, okay? So that way we can use the XLOOKUP function to help us to solve this problem. So here, one more time, I can select here a fruit, let's say bananas, and I want to bring here the quantity. So equal sign, VLOOKUP, double click it, and then I want to use here my lookup value that is going to be the fruit name, comma. My table array that I'm going to use here is in the my monthly sales report. I can select everything here, start here with the column that I'm going to use as reference, okay? I cannot start using the ID column as reference because I'm not, I'm not, not looking for the ID as the reference. I'm, I need to use the fruit as reference because I'm looking for fruits, okay? So I, can, I need to start here with this column. And then I'm going to just hold and drag to the right. Now, comma, and here we can see in the formula bar that my VLOOKUP function is asking me what is the column index number that I need to bring back as result. So because uh, we just use this range here as the, the range that we are using as criteria, I can say that my fruit is my column number one, the quantity is the column number two, the January month is the column number three, and so on, okay? So here, I want to bring back the column of the quantity, and therefore, I need to just use in the number two, okay? Let me just type it in number two here, comma again, and I want to use an exact match. So double click it, close parentheses, and then press enter. Here we have the quantity 8316, let's see if it's correct. Uh, bananas is here, and yeah, the quantity 8360. So now let's stick here with the XLOOKUP function to solve for us these two more tasks to bring back the total and the ID. And as we just saw before, I cannot use the, uh, the VLOOKUP function here to bring back the total and the ID because it's just to the left of my reference column. That way I cannot use VLOOKUP function, but fortunately I can use the XLOOKUP to help me. So here in the total, equal sign, XLOOKUP function, double click it. The value that I'm looking for is bananas, comma, so my lookup array is going to be the columns where I have the bananas, that column right here, comma, and my return array is going to be the total, all this column here, all these values that make up my column, my, my total column. Enter. Now I already have here the result. I can just click it and change the, the text format to, let's say, uh, accounting number format to make sure it's correct. And then here in the ID, I'm going to do the same thing. Equal sign, X lookup, double click it. I'm looking for bananas, comma. So I need to select the fruits column, comma, and then my column that I want to bring as result is my ID column, close parentheses, enter, and we're done. Whenever now I change here the fruit, I'm going to have the correct result. It's going to work even if you are using the VLOOKUP or if you are using the HLOOKUP function or the XLOOKUP to solve the problem with the VLOOKUP or with the HLOOKUP and you can, instead of using the VLOOKUP or instead of using the HLOOKUP function, you can always use the XLOOKUP function, okay? So if you always use the XLOOKUP function, you don't need to worry because it's always going to work for you. So if you think, oh, maybe here in this situation I need to use the VLOOKUP function, why not use XLOOKUP? It's going to help you too. Oh, in this situation I have to use the HLOOKUP function. Use the XLOOKUP because it's going to help you too, okay? So I really hope this video, guys, can help you out. And if you have any questions, just comment down below, let me know because it can help you out. And I see you tomorrow as every day has a new video. I see you there.